All right, here we go. I tried to make a video. I'm running out of time before I go to work. So I was like, let's just send it live, get through the, the pre-raid gear, the BIS gear, and it is what it is. Sorry for the no edits, but uh, I've been wanting to get this video out. They've been changing some gear in phase three, but I think it might be settled down at this point. It's been a, about a week of phase three, so I think the changes might be done. Um, so I found these, I put some together myself, but to make sure that I had like the best current up to date ones, I checked out the bounce Druid discord. There's a pinned comment from innate. So this is innate's pre raid gear, innate's best in slot gear. He's been simming everything like daily, even like updating his sets and all that stuff. Innate has also started putting up some YouTube videos. So uh, his channel is in the description if you want to learn how to farm your best in slot main hand dagger the blade of eternal darkness by soloing princess it, there's a couple of videos right here on how to do that and you can also solo the the dino for the wild offerings so yeah check that video out all that stuff but uh let's get into the pre-raid gear first and the the link to both of these sets also in the description if you just don't care about the other options. You just want to know what the BIS is. So there you go. If you want a little bit of extra information of other options, this is that part of the video. So for the helm, starting off, we've got leatherworking and tailoring. Crafted helms still hold a lot of weight to them, but an easy option is the Dreamweave circlet. It's a BOE crafted helm from tailoring. And then another option, potentially, I don't know if this uh, pattern is in the game yet, but if you're an engineer, you could get the 27 spell power, spell power goggles extreme plus. And that's versus the 21 spell power dreamweave circlet or circlet. Yeah, but that has at least some int spirit on it. So um, a couple options for the helm. Nothing too fantastic. The PVP helm only has 13 spell power. If you were to get the whole set, you were rank 7 and got 6 out of 6 PvP gear, then you would get that 18 spell power bonus. But this helm doesn't have crit, doesn't have hit on it, so it's, it's kind of eh. But uh, could get the 6 out of 6 PvP set and probably call it a day as well. For the next, there is the Jagged Bone Neck from BFD. Or the Nomer Piston Pendant. I have this on my NA Druid, so I'm set for my neck until I get a best in slot. Uh, but not really that big of a difference between pre raid and bis for the neck. So if you're still doing Nomer, then you can get your piston and piston and be set for quite a while. The other option was the Ghost Shard Talisman from the rare spawn Ashir the Sleepless in. SM Graveyard. I farmed it once. Didn't take very long, like six lockouts. I tried to farm it again. I was probably 50 plus lockouts and no luck that second time. So you could farm a five spell power. You could get a nine spell power from Nomer. Whichever one you get your hands on first. Good luck. And then there's still the BFD. If you want to go back to BFD. Uh... Shoulders, this uh, PvP shoulders has one hit. So if you saw like the uh, data mined version of the PvP gear, it didn't have hit on it. That has changed. And now it's it's pretty decent for PvE. Whereas it used to just be pretty solid for PvP because it's got all the stamina on it and a little bit less spell power than some of the other shoulder options. But uh, Kinetica Miss, if you're not a PvPer, you can go into BRD and get those. Or if you're doing Rock Grip on your Mara Princess runs with a group or something, filed, or f farming Wild Offerings, then you could try to pick up the Rock Grip Mantle. So a couple shoulder options there. Uh, but the, the best one, because of the hit, is definitely the, the Rank 7 PvP shoulders. Uh, cloaks, uh, BRD, pretty easy to get the sprite, cla ca mm, sprite caster cape. Uh, another really easy option if you're doing any Blood Moon events in Stranglethorn Vale was the Blood Rock cloak. 
So, 11 spell power, 14. 14 is probably pretty easy to just do a couple uh, BRD runs, but super cheap cloak from the PvP Blood Moon event. So, cloaks, uh, pretty easy, but not really a big difference in the cloaks. But at least there's a couple options that are not from like doing previous raids like Nomer or BFD. Speaking of doing Nomer, we've got uh, the Insulated Apron. If you have a tier token from Nomer, you can spend that on the leather chest and pair that with the legs. So you have that two set bonus. But you're getting 1% hit off of the chest, which is really important to get that 5% hit cap. The other options would be like a BOE, the Robe of the Magi, if you've got some gold to spend. 22 spell power versus the 19 spell power 1% hit. And then there's the Flame Strider robes from BRD, which are leather. So if you're PvPing too, you got a little armor there. And then 20 spell power versus the 22 from the BOE. So BRD runs, uh, you, there's a, a bunch of gear from there shoulders, cloak, chest, a couple more as well, I think. Uh, where is the caster PvP? This one. So 1% crit, 11 spell power. If you were to get the full 6 set, then that 1% crit, not too shabby. We do get a lot of crit this phase compared to the previous phases. So having 1% more crit, it could help. Uh, but only 11 spell power. That's the part that feels bad. All right. I think that's it for cloaks. Trying to make sure that there wasn't one more. There was the elemental raiment, but resistances, meh, not really fun. <laughs> cool. Moving on to bracers. PvP best option: Warsong Exalted. You can farm this rep, uh, getting a thousand rep per day. Doing that daily Ashenvale event turn in so at this point these bracers aren't really terrible to get they were pretty rough to grind out the exalted in phase one but it's way easier to get warsong exalted now the ornate dark iron bangles from nomer though have nine spell power one hit and if you're not a, P a pvp -er or you're not doing the ashenvale event then these are pretty solid to get that 1% hit. Uh, but other than that, there's not really great bracers. There's the seven spell power BOE ones, which I, I bought these on one of my druids. And I, those just seem to break really quick. I don't know what it was with those, but if I was farming anything, like my bracers would just turn yellow after like an hour and everything else would have like a lot of its durability left. It was strange. Change it there, sorry. Uh, so, yeah, Dryads, Wrist Bindings, try to get those. If you're still doing Nomer, keep an eye out for the Bangles. All right, the big the big one, the, the Main Hand Dagger. Blade of Eternal Darkness, people have abbreviated it to BOED. If you're seeing BOED, that's what it is. It's not Bind Unequipped or anything. Like It's Blade of Eternal Darkness from Princess and Mara. And it had 20 spell power added to it from its original equip bonus. I've seen uh, the proc is doing okay DPS. If you check out the sim, then it has that proc damage on there. But it also has a speed of 1.5, which I think you can melee weave with if you have that 1% haste enchant on your gloves. So uh, maybe there's another way I forget uh, to increase your dagger's speed but yeah this is also going to give you some melee kin damage if you're in melee range of the bosses and then the glimmering gizmo blade still pretty solid doesn't have the proc but it has 19 spell power just one less than the blade of eternal darkness uh, but yeah it is in gnomer so if you're being technical on pre-raid, then you're like, oh, Nomer's a raid. Then there's, uh, I've seen this dagger drop from Princess trying to get the 
the epic dagger. Only 11 spell power, though. Uh, so, eh, you know, the hypnotic blade, really easy to get. Just the, way too little spell power, in my opinion. So, uh, let's look at the staffs really quick. I haven't looked at the staffs in a while, but the staves. Somehow, there's a way to get uh, the new stat, the Nightmare Focus stat. That is from Shade. I thought there was a new one. But maybe that's all it is, is from Shade. Dang. So there's the Staff of Jordan, 26 spell power. But the, the offhand that you can get with the daggers is just too good, I think, for any staffs to be worth it. Even if you can only get your hands on like the Dagger of Willing Sacrifice, even from BFD, any of those lower daggers paired with the Spirit of Aquamentus is still going to outweigh staffs, I think. And that's from a quest chain. I think that's in Ungoro. Ungoro Crater. It's been a while. Yep, so if you can go down to Ungoro and do that quest, I think it's a little bit of a chain. It's been a while since I've done that. Then uh, 20 whole spell power on an offhand. There's some other offhands too. There's the Blood Moon event, which is 16 spell power. And you're getting stamina and intellect if you're PvPing. Definitely get that one. Instead of just the 20 spell power. Uh, but yeah, if you're not interested in questing, or that quest ends up being too hard. I don't remember what level you have to kill stuff, but... The Blood Moon PvP offhand shouldn't take very long to get at all. And that's it for the offhands, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. On to the gloves. Earth Warriors gloves. I've started to do this quest. It, you need to kill uh, eight of three different types of oh, arm. Uh, mobs in Winter Spring, and they're like level fifty-five to fifty-eight. So I was able to solo some of them, but more than likely you'll need at least one other person to go out there and do that quest but really quick easy quest to do if you have somebody out there to help you 22 spell power no stats uh the dreamweave gloves 18 spell power a little bit of stats for in seven spirit so could just make do with the dreamweave gloves and there's the 14 spell power from the pvp but that's only, yeah, if you're getting that six set, then that little spell power loss there with each of those pieces kind of adds up. So Dreamweave is where I chose. You radiated it was bait, yeah. It wasn't terrible. It was it was fun for the phase, but not not for, to prep for phase three, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Dreamweave or Earth Warder's Gloves. The Belt. This is one that you can get with the Wild Offerings. 15 Wild Offerings. And it's your Phase Bis as well as Pre-Raid. So once you get some Wild Offering farms going, then uh, pick up this belt and call it a Phase. 1% hit, 14 spell power. Pretty solid. You could try to farm as long as the gear is dropping at this point in Arena. I don't know. It's been a while since I've looked for updates for BRD, but the Banthok Sash would be uh, another option for belt. And then there's still the Nomer belt. Oh, gosh. 1% <laughs> hit on any of those pieces, though. So wh whichever one you can get your hands on first. The Wild Offerings, you can farm that out really quick. That's 15. Five lockouts an hour, three hours. Yeah, like, no, no problem. No problem. Mm, the legs, so that is the two-piece with the chest that we were talking about earlier, but it's only arcane damage, which arcane damage is better than nature damage this phase. Uh, but other legs would be the PvP legs, which that one is healing. Where's the caster? So the 1% crit, 1% hit. And then some spell power intellect on the PvP leg. So those are also pretty decent if you don't have the insulated. But yeah, not really too many legs to really mention. 
I would just stick to one of those two. Oh, ZF has some legs now. 23 spell power. There you go. Zone drop. BOE. What do you know? If you're not PvP in, check the auction house. <laughs> Everybody's doing ZF runs for those wild offerings. So I'm curious to see what uh what price those are in the auction house. Getting one shot. Oh no. Oh what the the belt? Belt is phase bis, yeah. And we've got the boots. The PvP boots because they have one percent hit and eleven spell power. Uh, Mara has some 14 spell power. Nomer has some. Emerald Warden's friendly. Nine spell power on those. Couple boot options, but really you would want to get that rank five. Rank five wasn't terrible to get for PvP. That 1% hit, it, it might last you a little bit there. You're not really worried about the three set bonus or nothing like that from PvP because it's only stamina. But if you replace the boots, it's not going to feel bad to just replace one of the pieces of PvP gear you have. If you have all six pieces, then it might be a little bit harder to justify swapping gear around. But if you only got a couple of the pieces, then it shouldn't be that bad. The rings? Mm, you can't get Eye of Orgrimmar because they locked the later half, the latter half, however you say it, of BRD. So that ring, not an option. Cyclopean Band from BRD, that one would be a fun one to go in there and do arena runs for. Uh, and then you could just pair the Cyclopean Band with the Advisor's Ring if you've PvP'd and you have Honored with Warsong. But that other ring... I think is it exalted with the new rep, or is it roar? Doesn't even say roar of the dream. I want to say that's exalted with the emerald warden's rep, like the incursion rep faction. So it's also a proc. Procs can be good. They can also just decide to not proc. I want to say it's a five percent proc. So that that's an option. Uh, really great for PvP, all that stamina on there. So I wanted it for PvP, but for PvE, stamina is great too. I've heard for Sunken Temple. So, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't like chase getting that rep to Exalted just for that ring. I'd be chilling with Cyclopean and the uh, Advisor ring myself. Mm, but. I think according to the Sims, it outweighs uh, the advisor's ring by a DPS or two. So, this is Biss. I, I try to say that all the time. Breath of the Beast, 1% hit, which gives us our 5% hit cap and 1% crit on there. And then it's 12 wild offerings. So, 12 plus 15 is... 27 and I think you need three to do the initial quest so like 30 wild offerings six hours worth of uh, wild offerings for the gear that you need so good luck doing the wild offering farm uh, and then dark moon card decay I've heard that this was might have been bugged to start out with but I think it might be fixed at this point uh, I'm never a big fan of getting Dark Moon Fair cards, but there's really no other trinket options unless you wanted to go into a previous raid. If you wanted to get the Miniaturized Combustion Chamber from Nomer or the Invoker's Void Pill from BFD, those are really the only other options. You could get the Tor Keldas, which is from like the Warlock Portal thing, but that seems like a whole lot of work, a whole lot of RNG. So, guy. On my alt, I might just have like the PvP. Um, where where is that? The PvP trinket that has like the Rune of Perfection. I I might just have Rune of Perfection, Breath of the Beast, and just kind of chill on the the trinket slot until I can get like miniaturized or invokers. Cause yeah, yeah, Dark Moon Fair card. I have no idea how much those are even going for, but. I know it's hundreds of gold for the entire set. 
if not a thousand plus. <laughs> so yeah, good luck getting that card. And then the idol you have to get from Nomer. So there's no real pre raid idol slot. You could get the uh the BFD mind expanding mushroom for five spirit, but no. <laughs> uh keep running Nomer. There's a couple of Nomer pieces in there, like the the neck and stuff, so might as well keep an eye out for that idol. It's off the first boss anyways. If you can't six out of six Nomer for some reason, you for sure can kill the boss that drops our idol. So then taking a look at the spell power really quickly, we have 219 spell power, 238 arcane, 5% hit, and just over 6.5% spell crit. That's out of form, so... Uh, oh, there's no talents. E uh, 3%. I had 3% on there, so 9.9.5% crit for pre-raid. Now the Bastion slot. Take a look at the difference there. 229 spell power. So 219 up to 229. There's a little bit extra arcane damage there because of the offhand. Uh, the spell hit has changed. He's down to 4%. I swore it was just 5%. Hmm. Maybe the trinket because the trinket had 1%. Maybe decay and ritual charm is simming a little bit better than having the breadth of uh, the beast. But the the bigger piece there is it's 9% out of Moonkin form. So there's 3% more crit, a tiny bit extra spell power. When I was simming the other day, it was like 90 extra DPS from going from pre-raid into best in slot. Uh, Visage of the Exiled replaces our helm. Jindo's Lost Locket. Replaces the piston. And they're only like super small upgrades. It's like 2-3 spell power, I think. Well, that has the hit on it. So the the helm, pretty decent. But the, the neck, 9 spell power up to 12. Eh. <laughs> uh, Blood guards, that's pre-raid. You can get that. The Hexu's cape, 15 up from 14. Like one extra spell power. You really worried about getting one extra spell power on your your cloak? Uh, the three set is the biggest set in Sunken Temple, I think. That and maybe the trinket would be the pieces to look after. And then the offhand, not too many classes might be going for the shadow arcane. So you might have a decent chance at that but really the i mean the ring again is only like two three spell power upgrade from pre-raid uh so i'd maybe just try to get the the tier set from Duncan temple the bracers pre-raid main hand pre-raid uh belt pre-raid the gloves uh you're getting intellect over spell power. This one was a weird one. It depended on when I simmed it. But the three spell power difference, I would say Earth Warder's gloves was better. But you're you're talking like a quarter per like quarter of a, a DPS difference there. One way or the other, depending on how many sims you're running and stuff. Fight length maybe. <laughs> so yeah, gloves like eh. And then there's a leather option too. But eh. If you can't find people to do the winter spring quest, then I I guess you can keep an eye out for those two uh gloves from Sunken Temple. But yeah, the belt pre raid, you get the wild offerings, turn it in. There's your other two pieces of tier. War of the Dream, pre raid, the Great Claw Band of the Harbringer. Uh, over the Cyclopean band is three spell power. A little extra int, cool. You're losing stamina. Feels bad. Uh, then Dark Moon card decay is pre raid, and then this one is another one where it, uh, it's kind of the same as the ZG trinket, where it starts off really strong, and then the more you use it, the weaker it gets, and then it has a two minute cooldown on it, so. 
I, I didn't really care for this style of trinket, but it's simming better than the, the raw spell damage trinkets, so I would pass on that in order to try to get some other pieces personally from Sunken Temple. And yeah, both of the links for the pre raid and best in slot, they're down in the description. If you want to rewatch it and or just take a look on 60 upgrades yourself for the other options that are available. But uh, there you go. I think I covered pre raid and BIS. Some people might ask for talent still. Let me just run through the talents really quick. We've got improved wrath, improved moonfire. I do shapeshifter. You can do natural weapons if you really wanted to, because if you want Omen of Clarity, then you got to spend five points to get there. So Nature's Reach, Improved Starfire, Vengeance, Nature's Grace, Moon Fury, Moon Can Form, and then anything else, there's nine other points you can put wherever you want to. But if you wanted that Omen of Clarity, then you could fill that out. If you didn't even want Omen of Clarity, you didn't want Natural Weapons, you can put those points into Natural Shapeshifter instead. You can throw them in Improved Thorns. You can get Improved Mark of the Wild. Those are really the only talents. Uh, moon Glow, you can get Moon Glow. I think Moon Glow is probably better choice mana-wise if you're having issues than spending six points to get Omen of Clarity. So my spec was without the omen stuff <laughs> it was like this right here and then i got all of those i got that and then i got that for pvp nature's grass for pvp but i got the bramble or the improved thorns i got the improved mark of the wild in case for whatever reason i was the only druid in the raid so there we go all right my mouth is foaming Try to like bust that out because I got to get to work. Let me uh, let me see what's going on here in the chat. I tried out Boomy in PvP with full PvP set and frenzied regen. Barkskin rune felt really good. Yeah, I need to get those runes and try out PvP. Yeah, that, that's the goal. But there's so much kata going on right now. Uh, I don't know if I have the time. Super tanky if you get the heal. Yeah, yeah. I want to feel tanky. I want to have all that stamina from the PvP gear. And do like a, a Rothy Basin and just see how long it takes to die compared to phase two. Ever play PvP? Do you think you have to because of the shoulders? I think it would help you. Like it's not going to hurt you to PvP. Uh, the shoulders is rank seven. Yeah, so that would take a while, but there weren't that many shoulder options. There's the Kinetic Miss. Two more spell power, but that 1% hit is pretty valuable. So, hit cap. I always hate seeing my spells get resisted. So, getting hit on gear, I I like to do. <laughs> but yeah, rank 7, it, it's a bit of a grind. I'll give you that. Bit of a grind. But, uh, I mean, you don't even have to PvP technically, I guess, for the Dryad's wrist bindings. So, I mean, as far as PvP gear goes, get the get the bracers, if anything. And then the other six set from PvP, the really, really strong gear. But it wasn't that great until they added, like, hit percent on four of the pieces, I think it was. And then all of a sudden it was like, whoa. <laughs> This gear is pretty solid for PvE as well. Mm -hmm. Shoulders from Emerald Dream Rep. Dun -dun. Where is that one? These nine spell power. Eh. I'd get. I'd. I'd do some BRD runs. Get the kinetic and miss. Get the rot grip mantle from uh, Mara. Yeah. Leatherworking shoulders. Yeah, they still hold up. The uh, the crafting stuff still really hold, holds up. Oh, that was one thing to to mention about the best in slot gear, was that this is assuming that you're an alchemist and enchanter. So there's no like crafted gear in the best in slot set. So if you were a leather worker or something you could trade out your shoulders maybe and find like a different set of gear that to work around not having the one percent hit from the 
uh, the PvP shoulders. So I, I don't I don't know what that set would look like, but I don't think the DPS would be too far off. But then you'd have to sacrifice being an alchemist or an enchanter, and those add a lot of DPS this phase. <laughs> Is Leatherworking Engineering the move if you plan to do PvP and PvE? My Leatherworker is already 225, so I'm deciding what to be my secondary. Ah, it's tough because it might change next phase, in phase 4. If crafting is really good for PvE next phase, then it... Uh, that's tough. I, I, I hope that they're going to uh, make elemental leatherworking specialization give us some good pieces of gear. I don't know if they would do it for PvP. Mm, so maybe you wouldn't need P, like leatherworking for PvP. I don't really know. Uh, engineering probably still for PvP for sure. But the second option... Mm. Enchanting doesn't really matter because if you die, then you have to wait for the cooldown to reapply your elixir thingy. Alchemy, I don't know if you can even have an alchemy like special flask or anything like that. You have like a potion. I haven't looked too much into alchemy. <laughs> it's been a minute, sorry. Yeah, I would, I'm sticking with leatherworking myself, and then I, I plan to do both PvP and PvE. Leatherworking engineering. Uh, check out Moonfire Beam, though. Shout out Moonfire Beam. He's constantly streaming on uh, Twitch. He makes some YouTube videos as well. So uh, Moonfire Beam would probably know the ins and outs of professions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can just farm... The Ash and Villa event for the Bracers. Yeah, yeah. Da, da, da. Nine days away. I just, I always forget to go to Ashenville to do the event. I don't have like the, the timer to show when the Ashenville event is. I think it's only three times a day. It's not noon and it's not midnight. So it's like three, six and nine. I think that's how it is. And the same thing with the Blood Moon event. I keep forgetting when the Blood Moon event is. <laughs> hey, I hope you're doing well. Yo, Zaddles? I, my glasses are really outdated, so I don't know if that's an eye. Zad Zaddles? Yo, I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, but I got to get out of here. Any more questions before I, I go? I've got like two minutes. <laughs> Go to for boomies being moonfire. Yo, uh, I have it in the description. I started off the stream with it too for this. Check out a Nate. Uh, he started dabbling in making videos, and that's where these two uh sets of gear came from. A Nate. I just wanted to add a little bit more context to it. He did in his post on the uh, Bounce Druid Discord, like other options like that. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to make it into a video format for people that like having uh like watching and listening to videos but if you're looking to solo princess uh he's got the strategy there and you can solo the dino for the wild offerings too so i haven't watched this video i watched his other one but yeah boom and he's only got eight subscribers how cool would it be if he woke up today and it was a double digit subscriber number you know what to do. <laughs> but yeah, any other questions on gearing and stuff like that, head to the Balance Druid Discord. Go to Season of Discovery. Go to Sod Balance. Click that little pinned message icon up there. First message is from a Nate. He's got uh, a sim set, rotation, Stolo Mar Princess run up there, pre bis, professions, consumed. There's so much information here melee weaving, multi targeting. And it's constantly updated. Updated as of April 9th. Today's the 10th. Up updated yesterday. <laughs> like, this dude is on it. 
Lots of good info from him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm out of here. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Hope you learned a little bit of uh, gearing uh, options for pre-raid. Best in slot. There's not that much of a difference between the two. So, if you're enjoying Sunken Temple, then good on you. But if you want to sit out doing the raid this phase, then you're not missing that much. You, you can get your pre-raid gear instead. All right, I'll be back for a podcast tonight about Season of Discovery. I'm stoked for it. I think Scotty's, uh, Scotty's super hyped for it as well. <laughs> and then we've got two guests. I'll leak it here. Uh, we got Hammer Dance coming back for the third, fourth time. And then we've got Spirit coming back for the second time. She only got to come on for like 30 minutes uh, her first time on. But she's full cleared, 8 out of 8, Sunken Temple. She's got at least two tunes, working up a third tune to 50. I think her third tune is 45 plus. Uh, Hammer's been crushing it, doing Sunken Temple as well. He's gone in uh, 7 out of 8, I think, the first week. 6 out of 8 for the first lockout. And then I think he was in there last night. So we're going to be talking about all the Season of Discovery stuff, all the changes, the incursion event, my favorite topic of discussion. Um, anything and everything phase three will be discussed tonight in about 10 hours from now it's eight o'clock. So six o'clock Eastern. Yeah. 10 hours away from the podcast. Wonder what's up, man. I'm out of here, brother. Have a good day. Time for the full doom. <laughs> yeah. You've been dooming a little bit in uh discord, but, uh, it's justified in uh countdowns discord. I, I've, I see your post in there. I see you. All right, guys. Take care.